Is eating gluten-free at Disneyland even possible? How safe is it and how much does it cost? If you have these questions, then stick around and I'll answer all those burning questions about eating gluten-free at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California. So let's get started. Now, here's a list to the topics that we'll be covering today. But first, let's start with some rapid fire Q&A. The first question, is there even gluten-free options at Disneyland? And the simple answer is yes, there is. And I'm about to show you what those options are. Next, how safe is it? The important thing to note when eating with special dietary needs or allergies at Disneyland is each food location is its own thing. They all have different kitchen setups and what is served at the location, which means some locations are more friendly than others. I will talk about the least friendly options at the very end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. I've spent the last six months studying reviews and menus, tasting food myself, asking cast members questions, so I'm hoping I can give you a really good idea of what your safe options are, but of course it's still a eat at your own risk situation. And depending on the severity of your allergy, you still may want to personally talk to a cast member to ensure safety. Speaking of that, who do you talk to? Not every cast member knows the details of food preparation and allergy details. That's why it's best to talk to those who actually prepare the food. You can also email special.diets at disneyland.com for any questions or if you want to add any specifications to a dining reservation you already have. Now, do you get charged extra for all these gluten-free options? The answer is no, you don't. How awesome is that? They charge the exact same as the non-gluten-free counterparts of the dishes. Lastly, just know that menus change often at Disneyland, so always check ahead of time on the Disneyland app to see if a location still offers your gluten-free options or perhaps started to offer gluten-free options. Okay, so let's get started with breakfast options. It's going to be the hardest to find gluten-free breakfast options just because there's just less breakfast options in general, especially in Disney's California Adventure Park but let's go over what they do have at both parks right now. I'm going to start with my favorite place to eat breakfast, the Carnation Cafe on Main Street in Disneyland. This is a small table service location that I highly suggest making reservations for ahead of time. Not only will you be able to enjoy the excited energy of guests entering the park as you dine, but you will find gluten-free options like breakfast sandwiches where you can choose either a side of fruit sausage or bacon, or even the famous Mickey waffles can be made gluten-free. Even the kids' breakfast plate can be made gluten-free here, which makes it a great option for breakfast. Now, if you're just kind of looking for like a breakfast snack, you can do this little hack. On Main Street in Disneyland is the Jolly Holiday that has all kinds of coffee and tea options, but they also have a gluten-free blueberry muffin, so you can mobile order a breakfast beverage and a muffin from Jolly Holiday, then go around the corner to Adventureland where they have a large snack stand full of all kinds of individually packaged fruits and veggies and cheeses. Grab your favorites and then enjoy your meal at the tropical hideaway tables, which are usually pretty empty in the mornings. And you can enjoy your meal surrounded by tiki torches and the sounds of the Jungle Cruise. If you find yourself in Fantasyland in the morning, the Red Rose Tavern has a few gluten-free options to choose from with the option of mobile order. Just make sure when you mobile order that you scroll all the way down to the allergy menu and click on the gluten allergy section. This helps alert the staff of your needs. At the Red Rose Tavern, you can have a typical breakfast of eggs and bacon or sausage and some fruit or the Little Town Harvest Bowl, which is also plant-based. My husband really likes the Harvest Bowl. It's a go-to breakfast item for him. Now, if you're wanting to do character dining for breakfast, you have two options. The first is the Minnie and Friends Breakfast Buffet at the Plaza Inn on Main Street. 
You will need to make reservations as close to 60 days out as possible because this is a very popular dining experience. I've done it and we've loved every minute of it. Now when you check in at your dining time, let them know that you need a gluten-free menu. It is a breakfast buffet, but they make a gluten-free breakfast plate in a separate kitchen area complete with eggs, potatoes, breakfast meats, and gluten-free Mickey waffles. And if you're worried about cross-contamination with the items like fruit or anything else in the buffet, they can bring some out separately that hasn't touched any other food yet. That way, all you have to worry about is getting pictures with all of your favorite characters. Now, if you're going to be spending your day in Disney California Adventure Park, you can do the character breakfast at the Storyteller Cafe in the Grand Californian Hotel. Just steps from the hotel's California Adventure entrance, and again, reservations are best for this experience. The breakfast buffet is the only time you will get characters with your meal. At Storyteller's Cafe, the chef will usually come out and show you everything that is gluten-free in the buffet, but you also have the option of ordering from the kitchen for safety. Items like omelets, Mickey waffles, muffins, and bagels are all offered from the back. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews as far as allergy safety is concerned with lunch and dinner options, but all of the breakfast reviews have claimed to be really great service and options. So I'm not going to lie, Finding breakfast in DCA is kind of tricky and gluten-free breakfast is even harder, so you're going to be doing a lot of like snacky fruit stand stuff. Now, if you're staying at the Disneyland Hotel, the Tangaroa Terrace has some good breakfast options. And even if you aren't staying at the Disneyland Hotel, you're still welcome to eat at any of their restaurants, including this one, to enjoy the ambiance and the Polynesian-inspired foods. And even the little coffee shop at the Disneyland Hotel has some good, just simple, grab-and-go, gluten-free options for you. And back at the Grand Californian Hotel, not too far away from Storyteller's Cafe, you will find just a few breakfast options there. Next, let's talk about quick service options for both lunch and dinner. First, let's go back to Disneyland proper, where we find ourselves back at the Jolly Holiday, where you can get the Jolly Holiday combo. It's a grilled cheese sandwich that is made with a gluten-free bun and comes with tomato soup to dip in, or you can get a roasted turkey sandwich with kettle chips. Both can be ordered via mobile order. Again, make sure you're selecting from the gluten allergy menu towards the bottom of the mobile order menu, or you can order in person. When getting food at the Jolly Holiday, it will be individually wrapped and labeled to help prevent cross-contamination. For the cheapest meal option in all of Disneyland, you can go next door to the refreshment corner for a hot dog in a gluten-free bun, basic or loaded, with your choice of mandarin orange or potato chips. Or for those colder Disney days, you can get some hearty chili with gluten-free rolls. Overall, people have reported it being a pretty good hot dog and not having any reactions after eating here. They also offer the gluten-free chocolate chip cookie and blueberry muffin that the Jolly Holiday does. Next, let's go across the street to the Plaza Inn. For a lack of a better explanation, it is cafeteria style here where you grab a tray, collect your food of choice, and then pay. The Plaza Inn is known for its fried chicken. For those that need gluten-free options though, they have baked chicken with mashed potatoes, green beans, and a roll. They also usually have options like pot roast and salmon, and a basic gluten-free penne pasta. The cost of these options will range from $16 to $20. You just need to ask a cast member for the gluten-free menu to view all of your options and your food will be prepared in a separate area. The rolls and pasta seem to be the least favorite, and the chicken and pot roast are the most popular. This is a delightful place to dine, and the portions are quite large and very filling, and you get a bit of fancy without paying fancy prices. In Tomorrowland, you have two options. The first is the Galactic Grill. 
Found in the heart of Tomorrowland, this is the place you go to to grab a hamburger and french fries. With mobile order or order in person, you can get a hamburger and fries or a chopped salad and they also have a kids hamburger meal option here and an outshine strawberry fruit bar for a cold little treat. You won't find the fanciest hamburger here, but it should be safe and if you're a classic shoestring fry lover like myself, their fries will most definitely do the trick. The other Tomorrowland option is Alien Pizza Planet. To be honest, Disneyland is not known for its amazing pizza, and the gluten-free pizza at this location is no different. With the option of a pepperoni or cheese personal-sized pizza, the food safety gets fine enough reviews, but the flavor profile doesn't have too many fans. Perhaps if you get the salad and make yourself a pizza salad, it may be better overall, but it is a okay option. The other pizza option can be found in Toontown at Cafe Daisy, where you can get a gluten-free pizza flop over with either cheese or pepperoni. The flop over has better reviews than the Pizza Planet one does, but still isn't the most popular item. But is a fine enough option if you're in Toontown, what I suggest is getting the chili cheese sauce from Cafe Daisy, a cold drink, and some popcorn and having a tasty little snack while chilling in the silly little Toontown. Back in Fantasyland at the Red Rose Tavern, like I talked about earlier, they do have gluten-free options for breakfast, but they also have lunch and dinner options as well. They do use a separate fryer for the tots and separate area for the food prep. The Harvest Bowl stays on the menu for lunch and dinner. Then you will also find a cheeseburger with a choice of tots or fruit for the side. And they also have a European-influenced chopped salad and a kid's meal hamburger. So you have your choice of two locations for hamburgers. It just depends on if you want tots or fries with your hamburger. As we move into Frontierland, you find less good safe options with the exception of Rancho del Zocalo. This is a cafeteria style eatery where they can provide an allergy menu and the chef will prepare your food fresh in a newly cleaned designated area. You can get a half of a chicken in the polo asado dish complete with Mexican sides like beans, rice, and coleslaw. Or you can get the trio street tacos, or if you're also plant-based, you can get all three tacos to be the soy chorizo taco. Rancho is one of my family's go-to places, especially when we're tired and hungry. It has plenty of seating, so it's a great place if you're doing Disneyland with larger groups. And it has a self-serve water station so you can fill up those water bottles on those hot days. Last for the Disneyland Park, we're going to head into New Orleans Square to Tiana's Palace. Tiana's is a newer change that has been made recently as part of giving New Orleans Square a facelift. You can mobile order here, but I like to order in person because of all the fun details inside the building and you get fancier dishes. You'll find a New Orleans style food here that's going to be spicier and more unique options than other places. You have the plant-based Seven Greens Gumbo, a favorite of my husband's, and the Shrimp and Grits, one of my favorites. As you can see here, it's not quite as fancy when you mobile order it. And you can also get a kid's roasted chicken drumstick meal here, so there's really something for everyone. Not to mention, you may just bump into Tiana making her rounds in the dining area. Now that's going to be it for quick service in Disneyland proper. Yes, there are other quick service places, but I'm not suggesting them and I'll explain that later. But for now, let's move on into the next park. Yes, we're talking Disney California Adventure Park. Just like Disneyland proper, you can pretty much count on DCA having one solid quick service dining option per land. Starting in the Grizzly Peak area, the first location on your right is Smoke Jumper's Grill. This is a great place to grab a double-decker hamburger, a chicken sandwich that has a little kick to it, and even a plant-based double-decker cheeseburger complete with dairy-free cheese. You'll also find a pretty decent chicken salad and a kid's mini hamburger meal. All of the hamburgers and sandwiches come with your choice of crinkle cut fries or a mandarin orange. I ate the gluten-free chicken sandwich recently via mobile order. It took probably an extra 5 to 10 minutes longer for my food to come out, but it came out of a separate area. It was flagged. I thought it was super tasty and I most definitely would order it again.
The other burger and sandwich option would be in Cars Land at Flo's V8. If you've watched any of my other videos, you probably know I love the vibes, air conditioning, and ample seating at Flo's V8. On top of that, you can find gluten-free classic American diner food like cheeseburgers, a club sandwich, a cob salad, an impossible plant-based burger, all served with steak fries or an orange. And just so you know, if there's fries on the gluten allergy menu, it means they use a separate fryer for them. You can also get a kid's hamburger meal here and even milkshakes, but I'll talk more about those in the dessert section, so just hold tight. Next door to Cars Land is Avengers Campus, where Pim Test Kitchen offers a few gluten-free options that receive mixed reviews. The most promising being the new Reactor gluten-free sourdough melt served with tater tots. Most people tend to not prefer or be big fans of the peanut butter and jelly kids meal here. It also seems like there's mixed reviews on how versed they are on food allergies here. It might be getting better, but I personally would go to Flo's instead, if I'm being honest. For a quick grab-and-go meal, the Poultry Palace in Pixar Pier is an okay option if you're not super sensitive. Everything but the chimichanga here is considered to be made without gluten but isn't necessarily gluten-free. So depending on how sensitive you are, this may or may not be a good choice for you. One of the best areas for food is San Francisco. Besides finding Baymax here, you'll also find a good old fashioned chicken teriyaki bowl. Found at the Lucky Fortune Cookery, you can find this teriyaki bowl in both an adult size and a kid size. It's not the fanciest thing in the world, but I've gotten it plenty of times and it most definitely gets the job done. But at Cucina Cucamonga, you'll find nearly every item on the menu is gluten-free, making this the most friendly option in both parks, hands down the quesabria tacos and the plant-based Dorados de Papa or potato tacos are the best and favorites amongst gluten and non-gluten eaters alike. The kids meals here are okay and get the job done. Now, I do have to say all of these tacos probably need the addition of a side dish to be completely filling, but that's okay because the beans and rice here are very tasty too. Lastly, the Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta in the back of Paradise Gardens. This is a cafeteria style grab a tray and order type of a place. But for gluten free options, you'll need to talk to a chef and wait for your meal to be prepared fresh. The options are usually pizza and pasta, but many people do mention that it is a bit of a chef roulette when it comes to total experience and food item availability here. Some have amazing meals cooked by thoughtful chefs and others are turned away or given skimpy dishes. So there's that heads up for you. And again, if you don't mind leaving the parks, the Tangaroa Terrace has a solid and unique gluten-free options as well. With a teriyaki bowl and a Hawaiian cheeseburger, both can be ordered either mobile order or in person. If you're liking this video so far and you're finding it helpful, give it a like. This helps me know to make more gluten-free guides like this in the upcoming year. And it also helps the algorithm know that it should show it to others. Snacks are an important part of staying happy at Disneyland, so let's go over the best options for gluten-free snacks. First, if you find yourself in Toontown, maybe you just rode Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and you need a snack, Good Boy Grocers is going to be the way to go with their dedication to allergy-friendly snacks. Whether you want to get yourself a novelty basket or blanket along with your snacks, or if you just simply want something to grab and go, you'll find plenty to choose from here from fresh produce to allergy-friendly cookies and crackers. You can even get a slushy here. The cool thing about this little snack stand is it seems to really be dedicated to offering allergy-friendly options for the park goers who need them. One of Disneyland's most popular snacks, popcorn, is not only gluten-free but also vegan. Now this mostly goes for just the basic popcorn that's sold at all the different popcorn stands throughout both parks. 
You're gonna wanna check ingredients if you're thinking of buying any flavored popcorns to make sure all of the additives are safe for you. Really, your best bet is going to be those snack and produce stands found throughout both parks, but California Adventure Park has more and they're bigger. It's not a visit at Disneyland for my family without a pineapple spear from one of these stands and a pickle. And boy, do we buy a lot of those pickles. Of course, sometimes it's nice to sit down and do restaurant-style dining at Disneyland, especially when the location has a fun theme. First off, you can swing back at the Carnation Cafe for lunch or dinner. You can do a later dinner and then pop out to Main Street for the fireworks after for fun and convenience. You'll find Walt's Chili that comes topped with cheese and sour cream, so if you're dairy-free, make sure you ask for it without a cheeseburger or a house-made bean patty veggie burger, a basic wedge salad, or if you want something a little bit nicer, usually the catch of the day can be served with rice and veggies as a gluten-free option. They also have a kid's peanut butter and jelly meal or a hamburger slider. One of my favorite table service locations is Cafe Orleans, found in New Orleans Square, of course. Reservations are highly recommended and always note that you have allergies when making the reservations. Now, it doesn't have tons, but what they do have is good. Your option for a starter will be a stone fruit prosciutto burrata salad, which is really tasty. For an entree, they have a beef bourguignon, and if you email special.diets at disneyland.com ahead of time, you can request a gluten-free Monte Cristo sandwich. They need a little extra heads up and time to accommodate this dish, but it can be well worth it to enjoy the Disneyland Monte Cristo with your bottomless mint juleps. And the kids' meals here are very customizable, which makes them actually very friendly for the kids who need gluten-free options. Of course, we must talk about the Blue Bayou, Disneyland's most iconic and popular restaurant, where you dine inside the Pirates of the Caribbean ride under the twinkling night sky. They also offer a special Fantasmic viewing dining package that can be made gluten-free friendly. So if you want a great spot for Fantasmic, I highly recommend doing this one. You will need to make dining reservations as close to 60 days out from your trip as possible because the Blue Bayou fills up fast. And just like Cafe Orleans, you can also email ahead of time to get a Monte Cristo sandwich made. It's the same Monte Cristo at both locations. You can also get a market fish. Whenever I've gotten fish here, it's always really, really good. They also have a good roasted chicken. And they have some good options for the kids to make just the right meal for themselves. I would love to see more gluten-free dessert options at all of the table service locations because we all love a dessert at the end of a good meal. But I will show you where you can get dessert next. Heading over to DCA, I've got to be honest and say the reviews are mixed at all of the table service locations and some of these menus are limited slash non-existent. I'll talk you through the options and then I'll share my new favorite downtown Disney location that has all kinds of gluten-free options. On Buena Vista Street, you have Carthay Circle, which is the park's fanciest restaurant. Going to the Carthay Circle is always a fun and special treat, but the menu changes often. They also never have a gluten-free option listed or available for anyone to really easily check ahead of time, but many say they've been able to be accommodated by talking to the chef. I'm sure contacting them ahead of time would most definitely help out. The Lamplight Lounge is another very popular dining location that also has a menu that changes often, and so the amount of gluten-free options changes. There's also a few reports of mix-ups with french fries and other items. As of right now, your options are a cheddar burger, but double check on those fries and maybe talk to a chef. The Al Pastor pork chop is a great dish and very popular, and they also have a lemon rosemary chicken. You should also be able to get the Impossible Burger with a gluten-free bun as well. And unfortunately, currently there aren't really any kid menu options for gluten allergies. 
For the wine country, Trattoria, found in the middle of the park across from Carsland, the trickiest part is that their gluten-free pasta oftentimes looks like the regular pasta, and once in a while it gets mixed up according to several reviews, so if you are planning on dining at this Italian-style restaurant, you'll want to really double check, or if you want to be safe, you can just go with the ribeye, steak, or the salmon. If you are getting the pasta, I personally like the shrimp Alfredo, and my husband loves the plant-based pasta. They also offer a raspberry sorbet for dessert, and I would imagine they could easily make the World of Color dining package gluten-free as well, which I highly suggest. If you don't mind walking into Downtown Disney a little bit, you will find Paseo, a new addition to the Downtown Disney area, a restaurant put together by a Michelin star chef. This Mexican restaurant was such a delightful find on my last Disneyland trip. And to my surprise, nearly everything on the menu is made without gluten. The Yucatan fish, which I got, was to die for. My husband got the chili relleno and loved it. The staff was so professional and helpful. The decor was modern and you could see into the very clean kitchen areas through windows. If you have any questions, I'm sure you could call and get the help you need. It's most definitely worth checking out. Of course, now we have to talk about sweets. How can we not talk about treats at Disneyland? Let's start off with talking about ice cream and cold sweets. At the Smoke Jumpers Grill, you have a choice of either chocolate or vanilla milkshakes. Just like any respectable 1950s diner, Flo's V8 offers milkshakes, but you'll need to make sure that you order them off of the gluten allergy menu or make sure you customize it and say no thanks to the road gravel cookies. Any of those ice cream bar stands you see out and about, you'll find those Outshine fruit bars at. And double check me on this, but I'm pretty sure the frozen bananas are also gluten-free. In Disneyland, over in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, there's the blue milk. This is reported to be gluten-friendly. But if my studies are correct, there's a possibility of them having oats in them. So if you are sensitive to that, double check on it. This is a love it or hate it type of a tree, and most people are either team blue milk or team green milk. And I'm happy to share that the pineapple Dole Whip found at Disneyland is gluten free and dairy free. You can get it in a cup or as a float in pineapple juice. You can get a Dole Whip at either the Tiki Juice Bar in Adventureland or the Tropical Hideaway in Adventureland. They'll also have other flavor options there, which should also be gluten free. Just look out for any options that may come with added toppings on top. Those may not be gluten-free. Back in DCA, in the Pixar Pier area, you will find one of my favorites, the adorable snowman frosted treats. You'll find mango and lemon flavored soft serve that's not only gluten-free, but plant-based. Just make sure you get your ice cream in a cup and there is a chance of some cross-contamination since they do have cones there. My personal favorite is the Pixar Pier Parfait, which is blue raspberry slushy and lemon soft serve topped with a cherry. Bing Bong Sweet Shop is not only one of the cutest little gift shops in the back of Pixar Pier, but it is also the location where you can get yourself a fun slushy. They have a ton of fun flavors to choose from and you can mix and match, making it customizable and perfect for a sugar headache. Let's move on to cookies. Staying in Pixar Pier, going over to Jack Jack Cookie Num Nums, you have the gluten-free Incredible Cookie, which is perfect for those who love shortbread cookies and thumbprint cookies. The Jolly Holiday will warm up your chocolate chip cookie for you so you can enjoy a nice warm chocolate chip cookie while watching the parade or some fireworks. The popular and classic theme park treat, Cotton Candy, is naturally gluten-free and comes in bags so you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. Now, the tricky part is going to be all those sweet shops found on Main Street and Buena Vista Street. Sure, you may find items like the Churro Toffee Square or a Caramel Apple or perhaps a chocolate-dipped fruit that might be more gluten-free friendly, but you have to worry about the cross-contamination since they are prepared and stored and displayed in all the same areas. So if that's going to be too risky for you, you may want to stick to the prepackaged treats that they have out on their shelves.
Now, there's some locations that I didn't bring up today because as of right now, they're simply not very gluten-free friendly, and some of them are straight up no's. Surprisingly, the Bengal barbecue is one of them due to the sauces they use not being gluten-free and being on almost all of the items and they get used on the grill, which is a shame because otherwise grilled meats and veggies with rice is an awesome choice. I hope they can make some adjustments and make this location more gluten allergy friendly that way. Snack stands are also iffy because food is prepared in facilities and there's not a lot of space of separation so you can get a lot of cross contamination. Here's a few of the snack stands that I would be a little bit more cautious about ordering at. Then there's the locations that a person with celiac, it would be their worst nightmare. Places like the Royal Veranda, the Mint Julep Bar, the Harbor Galley, and Aunt Cass's where they're just nothing but bread and couldn't be gluten friendly if they tried. Now in the past, the Hungry Bear has had gluten free options, but as of right now, it's getting a refurb to become the Hungry Bear Barbecue Jamboree. With what they've shared so far, it looks like it will be better food overall, but the fries are beer battered. So that's something you'll need to know. I just really can't tell how truly friendly they're going to be with gluten stuff here. 100% that meal on the top left, that looks like gluten free bread to me though. Lately, Disneyland's been really good at incorporating gluten-free options anytime they update a restaurant, so let's keep our fingers crossed on that. <laughs> and that's all I have for you today. I sure hope this was helpful for you, and I hope you enjoy your time at Disneyland. I'd love for you to consider subscribing to my channel to show some support. Thank you for watching, and take care.